This is one of the problems of the teaching because it tells you what to do. That's also a problem because one, now you've given the ego mind a task to achieve. And then when the ego is not able to achieve that task, then it gets frustrated and starts doubting and, having all these, and starts getting itself twisted up. The very simple thing you can do is say, look, I am, I'm here. What I am is the self. Now, here's some questions for you, Anna. Is there anything you need to do to be what you are? No. no. So you are already, right? Correct? Yes. And then another question to ask is, does anything that arise in my consciousness, does that disturb fundamentally what I am? No, but it does. <laughs> It, it. The answer is no. No. <laughs> Sorry, I know. I know it doesn't always feel like that. It doesn't feel like that. No. Go with, go with me. See if this works. Okay. Yeah. So you, you're feeling frustrated. The thoughts are racing. You know. You you feel confused. Whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever's occurring. You say okay. Mm. Whatever's occurring. That's the way it is. That's not my concern. I can't change that. That has nothing to do with me. That is God's doing. I leave God's stuff to God. Yeah, the thoughts, the feelings, the confusion, the frustration, even the good side of things like the clarity, the understanding, because that's illusion too. You say, that's all, Maya. I don't have to stop my thoughts. I don't have to do anything with that, Maya. I let, I let God deal with Maya. Maya and God are the same. I let God deal with Maya. That might be confusing when I say God and Maya are the same. Um, I'm, Maya is the ruler of the world. The ruler of the world, when I say let God deal with Maya, I mean, let the ruler of the world deal with the world. In Sanskrit, the, the different words for God, depending on the context. Ishvara is the Sanskrit word for the God that takes care of the world. Ishvara. And Brahman is the name of the absolute God, which is the self that we are. Mm. So we let God, the God of the world, that's, you know, growing trees and creating our thoughts. We let God deal with that. And we say, okay, I don't care if the thoughts are, lots of thoughts or not. So I'm just gonna be with what I am. I'm gonna be me. And I'm gonna let the thoughts do what they like. I'm just gonna be with me. Be what I am. Mm. I'm not going to worry about self-inquiry and turning to the self and turning into that stuff. I'm just going to be. I'm not going to fight with mine. There's a verse in Guru Vashkakova which says, none can confront the mind and subdue it. Hmm? Something like that. I might, have, I might not have got the wording exactly right, but it says something along the lines of, none can confront the mind and overcome it. So instead, turn, ignore the mind. This is, so instead, ignore the mind and, turn and abide as the self. What it means is don't try and stop your thoughts. Mm. Don't worry about the thoughts. They want to race, let them race. Accept it. That, that does, sorry, that, that sounds like um, that sounds like a bit of a contradiction to you know um, when Ramana says inquire to where the I thought comes from. Yeah, it's a different. It's you'll see that essentially the key thing is, and I'm going to contradict myself again. 
The key thing is that your mind is becoming quiet <laughs> and that your thoughts are reducing. That's the key thing, yeah? That's what we want. Now, one of the ways to do that is by saying, I am the self, the thoughts don't matter. Yeah. So I'm not gonna, I don't care about the thoughts. Thoughts, come, come, as many as you want, you know? Come and get me, I don't mind. You can think as much as you like, thought. In fact, that's another technique you can use. In Tibetan Buddhism as a technique where people try and create the thoughts and just be okay with it. Try and create the anxiety. You know how lots of people are trying to get rid of the thoughts, get rid of anxiety, get rid of negative thoughts. In some Tibetan Buddhist practices, they say, okay, now bring on, try and create the feeling of anxiety and lots of thoughts. And then you realize it doesn't affect the self. And you just be with what you are. And, the, and you're not trying to confront thoughts, reduce thoughts. And what happens? You get the result of being calm. And then your thoughts reduce. So it's just a little trick or a method of being. It's, okay. It's different method. You have to find the method that works for you. Yeah. To reduce your thoughts. And one very potent method is say, well, I don't care about the thoughts. Let them come. And then they, you know, maybe they slow down, maybe they don't. That's your attitude. You know, if the thoughts go on, and they carry on going on, never go, that's fine. That's the attitude to take. In Sanskrit, the word for attitude is bhavana. That's the bhavana. I guess the... I guess some of the thoughts are about when, so when I'm taking myself to be, you know, that this ome, the ego. So uh, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of an That's example. Cool. There's only one, remember, there's only one problem, which is ignorance. And ignorance is when you take yourself to be the body mind. So that if you're not taking yourself to be body mind, then there's never a problem. So you only get the problem after you've taken yourself to be omega. So all these things are occurring, like your thoughts and stuff. That's already because you've already taken yourself to be the body mind. Yeah, but then to that, that and then. But that keeps happening. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's the point of the teaching. I'll <laughs> <laughs> be uh, going around in circles, I don't know. <laughs> but it's just it's, it's that, just so that. frustrating because um because on the one side I know that I'm not, and then but I get then so caught up in it all and, no, and being this don't worry about it. Really? Yeah, of course. Don't worry. You're fine. You're the self. Okay, I'll try that. You're the self. Why are you worried about this stuff? Yeah, I know. In the moment, I do. In, I get all caught up in it. Well, another remedy is to have faith in God and the teacher and the teacher. So, I was to say, take Ramana as your guru, get that photo of him out, look at him, let him, mm -hmm. let his presence fill you up with, with, with confidence and faith. Or any deity that inspires you, that fills you up with confidence, faith and strength. This is how we fortify ourselves against the negativity, the various negativities that come to us in life. Mm -hmm. We trust God. We trust in Ishvara. We say, Ishvara, thy will be done. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I'm the self. Doesn't matter how many thoughts there are. Doesn't matter if there are no thoughts. I'm still the self. That consciousness, the awareness, you're in touch with that, Amen. That consciousness that you are. 
You're in touch with that. Am I, am I, did you say? Yeah, are you? Yeah. You have to be in touch with this as, an ex as a genuine experience. Yeah. Are you in touch with this vastness, this consciousness, this awareness that you are in whichever it happens? Yeah. That's what you want. And then you've got to find your own way when you have your own specific vasanas that arise that take you into Maya, you have to find your own way to extricate yourself. Whether that's God, whether that's a mantra, whether that's chanting, whether that's going for a run, going for a walk, whether that's doing some yoga, whether that's screaming and shouting, or getting a punch bag and punching, you know, whatever it is for you. There's so many different ways and what works for, work, what work, what works for one person doesn't work for another. That's why there are all these different variations of the same teacher. The key thing is, whatever gets you towards peace. And sometimes what gets you towards peace is saying, I don't care about peace, I don't need peace. Mm. But do not, when you see these teachings written down that says, oh, you don't, the self doesn't matter if they're thoughts or not thoughts. I don't want anyone misinterpreting that. And thinking, oh, that means you know, Ramana didn't say to still the mind. Sometimes Ramana will say, Well, why care about the thoughts? Let the thoughts come. He's telling you how to still the mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't make the mistake of some people take those kinds of phrases that are found in his works and say, Oh, he, you know, he, he says, You don't have to still the mind, even if thoughts there, it's fine. He's very clear in who am I. The whole point of the teaching is to still the mind. So there is a whole variety of teachings, but the point of the teachings is peace and reduce the thoughts. Step one. Step two, turn towards the self. Abide as what you are. Step one could be called purification. Step two could be called insight or knowledge. Step one is reducing the thoughts, becoming peaceful. We can call that generating peace, becoming peaceful, purification. Step two is know what you are, turn your attention towards the self. That's the insight, knowledge. These are the two wings of the teaching. Two wings of the teaching. They're called the two wings of the teaching because they go together. You need, if you, a bird needs two wings to fly, they go together. 